If you're considering buying a wide field refractor telescope but want to see some real images taken with the equipment so that you can get an idea of the kind of shots that you can be taking in your own back garden, then stick around because I've got a few images that I've taken using this exact setup you see here in this video. Hi everybody, it's Nick and welcome back to another Astro Exploring video. I'm going to be sharing with you some images that I've taken with the Skywatcher EvoStar 72 ED DS Pro from my back garden. I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel, uh, followed me on Instagram, Twitter uh, and, liked the and followed the Facebook page. Um, I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so using the button down below and make sure you hit the bell notifications so that you don't miss another upload. Thank you. So if you're looking to get into deep sky astrophotography, then the setup that I've got here is a pretty simple setup. I have another video where I give you an overview uh, of all of the equipment that I use. I will put a link to that in the description down below. Okay, so a really quick overview of the setup that I've got here. I've got my Canon 650D attached to uh, an adapter which goes into the Skywatcher field flattener. That is connected to the EvoStar 72ED DS Pro. I've got a three inch AstroZap dew heater there on, for the objective lens. Um, and that is all sitting on top of the Skywatcher ATQ5 Pro. And this is the version with the belt mod. And that, that is it, apart from power, um, that, that is all the equipment I use. I don't use a laptop or uh, with astrophotography tool. I'm not doing any auto guiding or anything like that. This is a really simple deep sky setup for beginners. Okay, so let's jump into the first image that I took. So I actually took this image on Christmas day because uh, that was the first time we had clear skies in about six weeks. Um, and I didn't care that it was Christmas day. I was headed out into the back garden under some clear skies. Boxing Day was new moon, so the sky was crystal clear. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, that was a shot that I took of the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, and that was actually the first picture that I took using this telescope. Um, it, the, the image consisted of 58 two minute exposures at ISO 800. I then took 20 dark frames, 30 flat frames and 50 bias frames. I put them all together into deep sky stacker, stack them there, and then I processed them in, uh, processed it in Photoshop. And that is the final image that you are seeing right now. The next picture you're gonna see is the Orion Nebula. I took this uh, a few days after Christmas day and it was, it was pretty much new moon. And again, the skies were crystal clear, perfect conditions. Um, this consisted of 60 two minute subs, again with darks, flats and bias frames stacked in Deep Sky Stacker and processed in Photoshop. I'm actually going to show you two images here. One is the, the whole wide field shot of Orion Nebula that I, that I took um, straight through with this setup. The other image that you're going to see is a cropped version of that, just so that you can see the, the nebula a bit more. Now just to emphasise, the picture of the Orion Nebula that you're seeing here is taken with a stock DSLR camera. My camera is not modified. I do intend to get it sent away in the next couple of weeks, but I haven't yet. And this image is really just to prove to you that you can take a good image of the Orion Nebula without getting it modified. Without doubt, it would look better if it was modified, but it's just to prove that you don't have to have the initial outlay. You know, if you're buying a mount, a telescope, a dew heater, uh, some power equipment, like you possibly even need to buy a camera as well. If you need to outlay all of that, you've already spent potentially a couple of thousand pounds. So uh, I'm just trying to show you what is possible with a stock DSLR camera. All of these images that you're seeing are before my camera is modified. Okay, the next image is M45, the Pleiades or Seven Sisters. This consists of 60 two minute subs at ISO 800. Um, again, darks, flats, bias, um, deep sky stacker and Photoshop. Um, I took this a few nights ago. Um, this was about a 50% illuminated moon. Um, so conditions were far from perfect. Again, um, so I live under Bortle 4 class skies. So um, my, my, my conditions are pretty decent here. So I, I haven't felt the need to invest in a light pollution filter just yet. I will in the future, but I'm, I'm quite lucky to have fairly dark skies just by being in my back garden. So haven't done one 
haven't bought a light pollution filter yet, but I do intend to. And again, what I'm doing is I'm showing you the full image and I'm also showing you the cropped image just so that you can see uh, more of the detail in, in the stars themselves. Um, the reason I'm showing you both is so that you can see what the object will actually look like as you've taken the picture and you're looking at it either on your laptop screen or on the on the camera screen. That is what you will see. You can then obviously crop it down to whatever you want. Okay, the next image that I've taken is actually back at the Andromeda Galaxy. Um, all the settings were the same, uh, same uh, you know length of exposure, same amount of exposure. However, what I did do was I changed my ISO from 800 to 1600 because again it was new moon and I thought absolutely perfect to um, just try it on a higher ISO setting and see if I can get some more detail um, from this image compared to the last image. And um, I did actually take more subs with this one, but uh, the cloud kept coming over so I had to bin quite a lot of my frames, but that's that's okay. And that is it. I hope you liked all the images that you saw. If you've shot any of those targets or you've got a recommendation for a target that you think I should shoot next, please leave a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.